Right, so these are going to be really quick two minute talks from all of our speakers who are doing um, a talk about all of the new developments. So these talks will be done tomorrow, but this is just kind of to sell the talks to you today so you can decide which ones you want to come to. Hopefully all of them, but we know you're all busy people. So first up, we've got Ag. So Ag, are you ready? Yep. Okay, I'm going to click the two minute timer because I'm going to be strict, okay? Okay. Flash your timer. Ready, get. <laughs> the um, slide jumped, Poppy. Oh, no. Hang on. Okay. Chaos. There you go. Um, so I'm going to give a uh, talk tomorrow about software, our software stack. Um, so different parts of the um, Jasmine software system, primarily focusing on the common software packages that are available and Jaspy, as I mentioned earlier on. Um, explaining how that provides support for multiple environments and how you can go and find which packages are available within each environment. Um, I'll mention community, commercial software and transfer software as well. Um, and I think this is important to anyone working on Jasmine because it'll save you a lot of time if you know where you get help for these things, what software is available, um, what's, what different types of environment available, how you can activate those environments, um, how you can use them with each other, um, what are some of the dangers and issues if you, um, if you don't know how those things work. Um, and I, I'll also add a little bit of information about building your own environments as well. This also touches on what I was saying earlier on about different file systems on Jasmine. Um, so you want to know where your software stack is, um, you want to know where you're going to build your own software, and if you're trying to share your sof software with other people, um, you want to be able to um, put it in the right place and give people access. That's enough from me. Okay, fab. Thanks, Ag. Right, over to you, Fatima. Um, let me unmute you. Here we go. There we go. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Fatima Chami, and I'm uh, assuring the Jasmine user support. I'm going to be uh, talking tomorrow about the transition to Slurm, um, which is the new uh, officially supported resource management for the Lotus cluster. And also it's um, Slurm is considered to be um, used by many other organization and uh, academia, for example, Archer, MetOffice and Jasmine. And also I emphasize on the new implementation of the MPI library to support uh, distributed memory uh, parallel jobs. Uh, the key message of tomorrow's talk is um, uh, encouraging everyone to convert their workflow to Slurm and also encouraging everyone who is still using the interactive uh, machines for um, a workflow to convert them into batch compute. And also I'll be mentioning uh, some MPI impl 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 implications for applications that need to be uh, built and installed again to run on the new, um, on the new system and a mention of the new AMD Lotus host that were added recently. Thank you. Ah, fantastic. We're all whizzing through these. Great. Thanks, Fatima. Uh, quick next slide. So, Matt, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Go. All right. So, um, yeah, uh, people will be familiar with um, the uh, scientific analysis or SI machines that we've had in place for many years. Um, one of the issues with these is that they can get overloaded. Um, and so there is a different way that we can provide these um, and that's making use of our uh, Jasmine community cloud. Um, so we now plan to provide um, kind of exclusive um, sign machines to communities um, instead of, um, or at least alongside um, the, the sort of general purpose shared by everyone um, sign machines. Um, we've piloted this in the past, but we now have some new capacity in a, in a new part of the Jasmine Community Cloud. Um, so uh, I'll be talking um, about uh, what we've done so far, how they work, and what our plans are 
um, to take this forward. Um, but yeah, um, it's well worth um, uh, listening to that because uh, the provision of the sewing machines uh, will be changing. I think we'd like to make this the default model that we provide these sewing machines to, um, to communities uh, by default with the other ones as a, as a kind of fallback. And the big advantage really is that it gives um, each community um, some autonomy to manage their own commu uh, compute. So uh, with their own um, set of users, uh, they can apply access control to that set of users. They can um, scale out, so deploy new uh, further machines as, as um, uh, requirements dictate, and also have some control over the usage patterns. Um, so perhaps conflicting groups with different usage patterns, that problem kind of goes away if you've just got one um, a smaller community using uh, a machine or set of machines. So uh, I'll be talking about all those issues. Fantastic. Thanks, Matt. Right, up next, I think we've got Ag again, and this one's going to doubly confuse me because I've got two things to click. I got ready. There we go. Thank you, Poppy. Um, so I mentioned earlier on that we've launched this new notebook service. And the hardest thing is to understand what this thing is. So if you look at the animation, you can see that there, there is a browser open and I'm typing Python code into the browser and it appears to be executing. So in a nutshell, that's what a, a, a Jupyter notebook is. Um, so I'll be introducing um, from scratch really what notebooks are about and highlighting some of the features and advantages of um, notebooks in general, but also our specific Jasmine notebook service. Um, the, the important thing from your perspective, if you've seen a notebook sort of service before is, you've probably been waiting for us to launch this. So it's definitely time to get involved. If you've not seen one before, um, it's, it's a different interactive environment. Essentially, you, you kind of have the same access that you would if you were SSHing into, um, into a Jasmine Sci server. Um, but there are some nice things that you can see in a, in a notebook, such as um, you can create visualizations and they will appear inside the, the notebook itself. Um, you can access data in the Cedar archive and in group workspaces in this new kind of lab book environment. And you can also share your workflows and collaborate with others really nicely. So around the world, scientists are using Jupyter Notebooks as a way to um, develop workflows to capture them and then share them with, with other people in their communities. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Zach. Okay, next up, we've got Matt Pryor. Can you hear me? We can. Good. Wait, let me click. Uh, okay, so my name is Matt Pryor. I'm a senior DevOps engineer, um, which means I build stuff. Um, so what the thing I wanted to talk about is the cluster as a service that Phil alluded to, which is about um, building your own custom platforms using the Jasmine cloud for your project. Um, we provide these pre-assembled building blocks that you can put together to build your own platform. Um, you can think of this like a, a mini Jasmine. So it gives you a sort of things like identity providers, clusters, uh, clusters that look a lot like Lotus, clusters that look a lot like the notebook service, uh, but they're all for your specific project or group. And we provide a simple interface for configuring these through the Jasmine cloud portal. Um, like Phil said, and the important thing really is that this is a dedicated resource for your project. So you can do what you want with it. It's still cloud, so it's still customizable, um, but we take a lot of the pain out of configuring some of these complex pieces of software. Um, I think that's probably all I wanted to say. Tune in tomorrow if you're interested in it. Oh, thanks, Matt. Um, okay, we've got Neil next. Okay, hi, I'm Neil Massey. I'm a senior software engineer at CEDA and um, tomorrow at 10 past 11, I'll be talking about object storage. And as Phil has already mentioned, object storage is the future of storage. It's, uh, we've got five petabytes so far um, on Jasmine, but that's really just a kind of um, 
proof of concept type um, system at the moment. And well, you can still use it um, as well as any other storage, but we'll be getting a lot more um, so that object storage is much more scalable and performant. And it's also uh, flexible, as Phil mentioned, you can um, see your data at the end of URLs. And that makes it very suitable for cloud um, computing model. Um, but the interaction with it is very diff diff different to a regular file system. So as users, why should you care? Well, regular file systems, they don't scale in terms of performance, afford affordability, and um, access control. And so object stores solve many of those problems. Um, it simplifies the access to the data. As I said, you can expose it as a URL, makes it much better for cloud computing. Um, but you need a change in workflow to use these effectively. Um, but there are live applications and libraries to help with this. And I'll be talking about some of those tomorrow, um, such as S3 NetCDF and X-Ray and Czar. And there'll also be some um, basic examples of just, just streaming a text file backwards and forwards to object store. So that's like a, a good way to get started and to learn what object stores are about. So, okay. I'll, stop there and uh, see you at 10 past 11 tomorrow. Thanks, Neil. Right, and then finally, we've got another Matt. You may have noticed we've got lots of Matts. We've got Matt Jones this time. Hi, right, so um, I'm Matt Jones. I'm a, a Jasmine DevOps engineer. Um, uh, over the last uh, year or so, uh, we've been developing um, a Jasmine metric service. Um, a metric uh, is um, a measurable quantity which uh, can generally be used to build time series data. So for example, th this could be um, the amount of free space in a group workspace or the number of users we have on Jasmine. Uh, talk a bit about how, how we're gathering them. And we're also going to be producing um, targeted dashboards for different groups of users. For example, we could have um, a general Jasmine dashboard and a, a group workspace manager dashboard. Uh, so why should you care uh, about this? Um, the the uh, aim is that the metrics uh, and dashboards will provide up-to-date information about the Jasmine system and its resources to us and also to, to users. Thanks.